Good afternoon, Richland College. Good afternoon, El Centro. Holy lady with a baby. It is December. <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> Last episode, f- season finale. Season three finale. We brought a pomegranate. <laughs> what other radio show brings fruit onto the air? It's never before seen innovative stuff here. Mm-hmm. Brought a pomegranate. Eat from the palm till you're buried in granite. There you go. You can't nice. stand it. Here we go, guys. Yeah. You are listening to KDUX <laughs> Web Radio. Broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are our own unless otherwise stated. And do not reflect the opinion of KDUX Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. Welcome, folks. We've got, we've got a, quite a crew here. Um, first of all, I'd like to, to uh, introduce the voice from nowhere, Anthony. It's your boy. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I give you my it's really loud. Uh, <laughs> just a uh, picture, uh, picture of me as a parent. So today I'm black. Well said. Well said. Mm-hmm. We got Anthony via Skype. Who Anthony, else we got in Anthony, the studio? A- Anthony projected his soul onto a computer, so he's kind yeah. of he's stuck here. Yeah, I'm dead now. But he, no. He's leveled up. He's pure spirit. Ooh, unfortunately, we can't talk about Thoth according to Emmanuel Kant. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> uh, Hold on, let's do an introduction. Okay. Introductions. <laughs> uh, so my name is Al Pacino. You may know me from some nice movies. I don't feel like I need an introduction, so we're just going to go on to the next person. There you go. <laughs> right, so, uh, good day. I'm a UNC student now. And my name is Mary B. Romer in the English sense. <laughs> well, that's, that's as good there be. Mm-hmm. Traitor. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, but another traitor I had to transfer. <laughs> He's always a thunder duck at heart. Only kind, then. Who's next? Uh, you guys don't even know who Indra Gandhi is, right? Yes, I do. That's my favorite person ever. Do you really? Indra Gandhi? Yeah. Yeah. I love Indra Gandhi. Who is she? Who I'm kidding, she? I'm kidding. I don't know who she is. She's the first woman prime minister in India. Nice. Yeah, no duh. She is an advocate for free will and, you know, freedom from British people, so. Oh, oh okay, so. Mortal enemies. I hate British <laughs> people. <laughs> Who do I got to my right here? Uh, my name is Kaylin Scoggins. I'm an adjunct faculty member here at Richland in the government department, and I'm happy to be a returning guest. Yes. Kaylin, welcome back in the studio for the, uh, officially the second time, and officially the third. And, uh, of course, I'm your host. I'm your cozy host. This winter. Oh, well, that's winter what afternoon. co-host means. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's co-host. Uh, Professor Mansi, faculty uh, sponsor of the Philosophy Club. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been quite a semester. I got to tell you, uh, the Philosophy Club has ascended to, to new heights. Um, uh, we we did more things as a club than I think we've ever done before, and uh, might I say we've done them all pretty okay and decently <laughs> we did we've done a pretty pretty darn good job in my opinion and so i, I do want to say congratulations uh to to myself for for <laughs> launching this vessel and just seeing it reach uncharted waters and uh, of course a special thanks to the uh the officers um, and the members that, in general and so yeah shout out so we have a, we have kind of a mixed bag here so we got uh we have of course uche reigning president of the philosophy club returning president next You're semester <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Al Pacino. We've got Mario, who is a uh, a former officer here, the uh, the previous secretary, currently a, a philosophy major at UNT, and then we have somebody who's potentially going to be uh, an officer. Do I do I understand this correctly? Yeah, a communication officer. All right, so we have so new president. You said well. Okay, <laughs> no, no, I'm already, no. Okay, so we got uh, we have generations here. We've got uh, alumni. We have alumni. current. We have uh, perspective. Ooh, Pretty exciting. And then, of course, um, we represent the faculty, I guess, on this side of the booth. What the listeners at home don't know is that we spent about the last 20 minutes hmm. <laughs> trying to rig this Skype thing. And uh, I, I think we, we've got Anthony there. Um, Listen here, buddy. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to that's gonna scare me every time. Yeah. But, uh, but we've got to go. Who's that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna. You know what's gonna happen is I'm, I'm gonna forget you're even here, and then you're gonna say something like s- after seven minutes of silence, and it's just gonna kick in my my schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious! <laughs> All right. So uh, last um, last meeting was on Tuesday yesterday, and um, it was quite a delicious topic: free will versus uh, predestination, or or freedom versus determinism. It eventually became, and uh, this is a classic philosophy club topic. Um, 
one that we've, uh, I don't think we ever actually handled head on. Um, this sort of came up incidentally uh, here and there. But um, it was great. I, I got to say, I was so encouraged by the turnout at yesterday's meeting. I, I think we had, what, 20 people? Mm -hmm. Considering it's finals week. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's finals week. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, Good luck. Uh, <laughs> dodging uh, the, the e-campus um, <laughs> minefield. I am. <laughs> I'm trying. But, uh, but yeah, anyways... A lot to say. A lot was said, and um, really, we could, we could, uh, I guess. Oh shoot! I don't have my duck bill for the last episode. Wow, man. Shoot! I, I'll tell you really what. Really dropped the ball. No, just, there. just quiet. Let's. <laughs> let me just run to my car. Actually, you know what? Can you guys meet here tomorrow? I'll have a duck bill. <laughs> All right. Uh, Requack. There it is. I did hear some quacks. Kaylin, can we get a quack? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what, um, was there anything in particular that you wanted to hone in on or anything uh, that we didn't get to that maybe you wanted to discuss? And, of course, Mario, uh, yeah, feel free to chime in as well. I know this is a topic that you're very interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, True. <laughs> True. <laughs> Not all at once. Okay. Because I got some things. Okay, I, I'll kick it off in the following way. Um, it seemed like uh, there were distinctions being made at yesterday's meeting between sort of freedom and uh, as opposed to a more mechanical understanding of, of, of the universe, a more, uh, I suppose, scientific understanding of, of the, the physical laws that are unchanging and thereby govern the universe. And in such a place, can there really be true freedom? And then there was this idea of freedom or free will over and against the notion of, um, well, I guess in a more theological sense, this idea that uh, freedom only means freedom in any very particular way so that you're allowed, you're, per, you're permitted to lead a life that is, um, I guess, characteristically human and thereby liberating or, or, or empowering and, and, and therefore freeing from more animalistic urges or, or vices. So there are two different kind of ways we can, we can talk about it, remaining faithful to how it went last time. Um, or we could just sink our teeth into any old, any old fact. Mm -hmm. So how could we define free will? Uh, what do you think, Mario? All right, Cheshire so Cat grin forming on his face. All right, so it's like the question that I thought was being asked through our generation of history. And are we you free? have the answer. Are we free or are we determined? Well, unfortunately, we do not have an answer. That's why it's an ongoing debate still on today. It seems like we have an answer, but it is still not the answer. Hi, um, hi, move, your, move your microphone a little bit so I can see... Mario's eyes as they twinkle <laughs> when he speaks. <laughs> there we go, thanks. Um, all right, well, geez, Mario, this is this is a whole new you, buddy. I mean, uh, before, you, there was such passion, there was such <laughs> vivaciousness, and now you're just very stoic about it. You and T changed. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> uh, I would say that it's not really like, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe I am still passionate a little bit, but uh, I tend to be like a little bit more like skeptical in one way. <laughs> Ho hopefully not jaded. <laughs> Oh no! Don't worry. Yeah, the I, I still can answer. Turn of politics, I'd say it's jaded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you mean jaded? <laughs> like jaded. bitter, bitter. I think. Yeah, like like uh, a like chip on your cynical like a bit. Yeah, yeah, like you feel as though the magic is gone, the thrill is gone. Is the thrill? St is philosophy still thrilling? Uh, yeah, still thrilling and interesting for the moment. But okay. I don't know. Probably because I tend to like uh, be a little bit like kind of more thinking and maybe when there's some point sometimes I become serious sometimes I don't become serious so it kind of depends on the mood because even I don't know myself how well to even answer probably because I'm trying to like pro propose or uh, I would say not propose but in order to answer this topic I have to say in a clear voice that's one thing I'm trying to do maybe this is the reason why I'm not like shooting that much because I'm trying to make my point clear and I feel like that's really important to do so all right, so there you have it, bachelor number one. <laughs> Who do we have next? I, I think I missed the point, though. So, uh, sorry. So, do it, it did we ever discuss the difference between determined and free? Oh, the difference? Yeah, sure. We're focusing on Mario right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I'll try my best to define what a free will is. Yeah, okay, please. So, so probably determinism is the idea the, that everything has a cause and effect. That everything is basically, since we measure everything based on cause and effect, therefore, everything tends to have a determination. Like, for example, we created books, so they're determined for us to read it. We created phones, so it determined us to, like, call and answer. And then we also determined that computers are determined for us to gather information and to be able to access more information. So that's pretty clear. Like, in objects, we can see that determination. 
but same thing for animals like animals are determined like to behave like for example um uh, like fish are determined to swim because they're in water and we can see that pretty much for every other animal and i just gave one example f which was for fish but then the question would be like what about humans Think, are we also determined or are we the opposite of determined which we call free will meaning that we have choices that we just have limited unlimited amount of choices so that'll be like the definition of free will like yeah, we have nice um, job. yeah i already <laughs> said it so probably i shouldn't repeat it <laughs> well yeah so so essentially it sounds like uh, what mara is saying is that um we're, we, we all have a given nature and or, or certain things have a given function mm -hmm. and that more or less determines the kind of i guess life they should lead the kind of actions that they undertake or the kind of ways in which we use them they're determined because of what they are and so in, in that sense again just like a human being is not free to just start flying around the room everywhere which i think an, an example you had yesterday anthony um, because of the kind of thing we are because we're humans so that's simply not an option it's not a possibility our possibilities are in a certain sense predetermined given our given our inherent natures is that kind of what you're saying um uh, uh what was the question professor <laughs> <laughs> like um, well, well, simply, uh, I mean, is, is, is that a faithful recounting of your understanding of, of, of what you mean by um, determinism versus freedom? Uh, I would say in some way. Mm, okay. yeah. And Mario, you graduated. You can call me Jeff, pal. Oh, for real? I'm no longer, uh, yeah, I'm no longer professor. Oh, but that's not know, for the rest of you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Are you <laughs> sure? Are you sure, professor? Because I'm like, I'm already used to like the, the person. Call him Jeffrey. I'm not determined. I'm free. I already graduated. From <laughs> I'm free class. more than just your professor. All right. <laughs> mm, well, I will try to see about it. I will think about it. If I'm determined to call you by your name, or I'm still determined to call you. It's your free will, man. I mean, I mean, just so we're clear, it's Jeff in the English sense. <laughs> oh yes, Jeff. Like I Jeffrey. That was in the Sicilian sense. I was in the Sicilian sense. Yeah. I would want to try to clarify something, or, or rather, ask for for clarification. Yeah, in, please. In the context mm -hmm. of this. So speaking of uh, the examples given as humans being determined to, to not be able to fly, at least by their nature you know, in, a, in a natural sense, mm -hmm. um, this seems to be equating or, or at least uh, implying an equation of being determined with having a certain particular set of causal powers, the ability to do one thing or, or another. And it seems that uh, rather than determination being related to causality in that way couldn't you also conceive of determination or rather causal powers as being the the genus or the broad set and will being one particular causal power that flows from creatures of a certain nature oh gee shut you down mario Oh, 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 I'm getting one. Please leave the premises, Mario. But, no, I'm, I'm, really the the I'm really curious in, the, in this equation or this identification between causation and determination. Oh, that's an excellent point. Yeah. Oh, so oh, you're asking me, oh, you're telling me if I'm determinist? Uh, no, no, I'm asking you whether you're determinist or not, whether you understand determinism uh, or the the act or fact of being determined mm -hmm. as being intimately related to causation or causality in a certain way. That mm. To be caused is to be determined hmm. in the same sense. Or is there some maybe distinction or, or kind of gap that ought to be opened up there? Yes, there is. Okay, then what way? Oh, I, I said that this will come, this will bring David Hume, will be the main example philosophy that will clarify this point. I would say, I will put, put it in the table just to make it clear. David Hume basically w is what we consider a compatibilist. Mm -hmm. But also philosophers are also fighting about what is a compatibilist. Some would say, no, compatibilism is just determinism. So what is together. a compatibilist? But other people say, no, 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 compatibilists are both determinists and free will. What's, yeah, so what is a compatibilist? Oh, a compatibilist? Um, all right, so I think I'll, I'll lay out both definitions so you can decide which one you agree with. So I'm just going to lay out both of them. The first definition will argue Stay that... Stay the shot, Uche. The first <laughs> definition will argue that compatibilists are people who agree that you have both coexist in free will and determinism. They just coexist both in the same realm. So he, they will say that you have free will in some cases, but you also are determined in other cases. That would be like one definition of compatibilism the other definition of compatibilism claims that nope everything is pretty much de determined but you have some slight free will despite the fact that everything is just suddenly determined okay 
Is there any version of compatibilism that would claim you have both free will, that you are both free and determined in the same sense at the same time? Yeah, it was the first definition I laid out. Well, no, the first definition you said you're you're determined in some ways but free in others. Yeah, like coexist, but also that can also the definition that you provided also fits in that one as well. Yeah, so so I think it's I think it's like this. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, and correct me if I'm wrong. Ultimately, your your question is. Can't the free will itself be considered something um, of, of its own uh, cause? Which is to say that if the free will is a capacity that is sort of discovered or uncovered by a philosopher, namely St. Augustine, and the free will is sort of a, a, a genesis for action, a genesis for as well as deliberation prior to action, and that is part of our nature, um, be it corrupt or otherwise, does not, is that not still in itself... Um, uh, I, I suppose tantamount to saying we are inherently free as opposed to determined? Like, if the freedom is sort of built into the kind of thing we are, then how can we be determined fully? Well, that would be determined. In fact, we'd be de determined to be free. We don't have a choice in whether we have free choice or not. Yeah, and that's, and that's kind of where the existentialists take it, mm -hmm. just sort of where I was leading. But yeah, I th so I think that's true. All right. So, uh, so I would let out the, one of the key philosophers who was absolutely determined in this case would be Dolbeck for free will. I, I don't have that, not that much knowledge for... Who's a philosopher that's an example, like who believes in absolute free will? Probably some of you guys have it out there, but then you can point it out to me. And I probably will learn a little bit about, I'm like, oh, this philosopher do believe in free will, and I want to see the arguments. How he said let out, and see, I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, I think I'm going to speak a little bit in behalf of Dolbeck, who was like one clear example, the only clear example I have for free will. Mm -hmm. No, 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 determinism, <laughs> sorry. So according to Dolbeck, he claimed that our world is just purely determined. He will be considered what we call a pure determinist or a hardcore determinist. If someone mm -hmm. doesn't like the word, I like straight. They're like, oh, straight sounds pretty. He's hardcore, man. He says, so let's use the word hardcore. Sounds much better. So like I was saying, so according to Dolbeck, he will claim the, that everything in the world is just material. So that's the first thing he will let out. Everything that exists has to be material. Therefore, mm -hmm. anything that is non-material cannot exist. So stuff like ideas, probably ideas in God and thoughts, will, according to him, they don't exist because they have to be material. This is according to your uncle? <laughs> no, Dolbeck. <laughs> no, my oh, uncle. Okay. Very strange idea. The philosopher Baron Dolbeck. Um, that's, mm, that Baron was his, Dolbeck? Yeah, his full name was Baron Paul Henri Thierry. Paul Henri Thierry. Shout out Dolbeck. <laughs> Baron Dolbeck. I, I've heard of him. Shut up, shut up. Go on, go on. So, so, I'm not gonna let out, so I'm not going to let out his awesome materialism right. because I don't like <laughs> what we focus on right now. So I'm going to let out the determinism. According to him, he claimed that since everything is material, everything is like a machine. And yeah. humans are also machines. And this is the way he would argue. People were like, oh, right, but, but I have free will. I can make my own choices if I get to eat what I like and everything. But and no th th this part was being made by a bunch of people yesterday in the philosophy club. So uh -huh. this is like a recap. Ah, uh, yes, uh -huh. <laughs> Correct? But nobody would be like, all right, so if, if, if you have free will and you can choose whatever you want, then what can you tell me about the way you look like? I'm like, that's determined. I'm like, you didn't choose, to, you didn't choose your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. That was something that you just determined. And, and people and everyone, the majority of us will agree like, yeah, true. We're, we didn't choose our parents. It, it was pretty much determined. Mm -hmm. Unless someone can argue and say, no, no, I did choose my parents. But I don't know how we're going to argue that at least someone has... I can't try to remember uh, right have now. you ever seen the movie North, starring um, a young Elijah Wood? Uh, no. What is it about? <laughs> Where he divorces his parents. You are never to speak of that film again. Which allows him <laughs> to <laughs> potentially oh. find new parents. I what? did that. Hmm. But anyways, uh, so what would <laughs> Dolbeck... No, I didn't. What would Dolbeck... My Dobek, son. So oh, my God. Like if Dobek... I'm kind of asking the question, what would a determined life look like? So it's, oh. is it basically, legitimately, if I have a choice between five shirts in the morning... My choice of shirt is legitimately predetermined where I'm going to pick this shirt no matter what my preference is. According to that, I, th I yes, think it's it is. I, th I think it's um mm -hmm. your shirt your choice in shirt is determined because you can only pick the shirts that you own or the shirts that are available to you. But even out of the shirts that I'm available, wouldn't I have the free will to choose of those? Mm, also double with a nope, you still are determined to that you're gonna choose one, but I will let up more stuff about Dobek. So he will say that every biological factor in you is mm -hmm. determined. That means that your name, also your name, is determined. So that means that if you claim, no, I choose my name, Dobek, like, nope, 
your name was given to your parents, they chose your name. So determine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but it's up to but you. But they've to had determine. the free will to choose your name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, this is where I'm gonna bring Debbie Hume to well, well, just, discuss just, that. But for, just for the audience, just for the listeners, real quick. Mm -hmm. If you hear a voice and you don't see uh, a person attached to it, and just know I've ascended to the point where I can actually project <laughs> my mental thoughts through the microphone. And so sometimes if you hear me interrupting myself, it's just because, you know, that that complicated of a thinker. Which would then do a <laughs> drawback yes. is that materialism can be true. Yep. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so <laughs> how will I answer which is question? So I would say that the best key with this case would be the, the compatibilist. I would say the, I think it's David Hume. I would say David Hume would be the one probably to answer this key issue. Because David Hume was basically a compatibilist, but, but, but basically... He seemed like he was not a compatibilist, but some of the determinants will use David Hughes as a key argument to prove that determinism is correct. Really? I, I want to show of hands, how many people thought before the show started that the word compatibilist would be said about 45 times? Uh, first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Anthony, raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Anthony, raise your hand. Uh, so, yes. so David Hume will argue was it your question, Uche, and this is where I'm going to answer? Okay, can I, I mean, remind me what my question was? <laughs> yeah, your question was, all right, so if you have five church, uh -huh. should we start recording that? You have the <laughs> choice to choose which one you like, which one you want to wear. Uh-huh. And, and, so you, throw, and you, throw, you have free will, the fact that you have five church, and uh -huh. you get to choose. So the, the, the fact that you have five church is mm -hmm. predetermined because you have a certain amount of money, you have mm -hmm. this, this, that, these are the only shirts that they sell in the stores around you. But when you have the five shirts in front of you, do you not have free will to choose? Oh yeah, David Hume will grant you. Choices. Yeah, David Hume and I will grant you that. Yeah, you you have five shirts. Yeah. Yeah. But there's one thing about it: you are determined to choose the one that's the best. So that right there. But who decides if it's the best? You do. Uh, you do, but you're determined to decide that you're always gonna go for the models. best, according to David Hume. He said that every human is programmed to go whatever the best all the time so the best but there the will best. never be something there will never be two stuff or multiple stuff equally best Every there, there's, there's there's gonna be one that always see, i think the highest the might i'm kidding are taking sorry. Sorry. The, I'm like, kidding, I'm kidding, sorry. Uh, in tuesday's meaning we uh, female is also what me, uh, meaning you assign to the choice itself you're saying that every choice we make uh, between if we give every choice we've ever made is like the shirts like we always choose the best shirt but what if you see a shirt that looks like the one you wore when you were a kid i mean it's not the best shirt it's pretty shabby but you'll take it anyways because it's a shirt you you always wanted to have yeah best still determined best 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 still determined because now you're choosing not the, the material being the best but the memory being the, the best, most best yeah but best then i feel like free will, yeah no i feel like yeah, uh, will grant you, yeah it's subjective yeah I feel, I feel like free will is making a choice with meaning assigned to it it might it can be any meaning it could be the worst it could be the best it doesn't have to be anything but that's the point. I mean, even if you have only like a few uh, determined choices with you, free will is the ab is the ability to make a choice without yeah. repercussion. Think about it. Think about it. Well, think yeah, about to build it. to build on that and to return to to the Hume argument, mm -hmm. wouldn't the argument about you were determined to choose the best or at least what you think is the best, isn't that at at, 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 at isn't that tautological or at at least trivial? Like, well, yeah, okay, you're going to choose what you think is the best. How do you know that? Well, if it wasn't the best, you wouldn't have chosen it. Like, doesn't it seem like it, it's, it's either tautological or only trivially true? It doesn't really seem to... Uh, Can you explain what tautological yeah. means? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, one clarification of tautological. I also heard the word, but I don't know what the meaning. Uh, unless, uh, I think I need to... Uh, Jeff, you want to field this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, tautology is essentially, it's, um, y you're arguing in circles. Okay. And there's no actual substance to your claim. So it's like, uh, it basically, you're not saying anything. Mm -hmm. you're, you're basically just repeating yourself. It, it's, it's fallacious in a way. Okay. So, so to, to create my, 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 my accusation of Hume's argument being either tautological, meaning circular, or mm -hmm. trivial, meaning, yeah, it's true, but doesn't really make that much of a difference to the mm -hmm. topic at hand, mm -hmm. um, would be that if Hume is speaking in terms of er, making an argument in favor of some kind of determinism and saying that, well, even if you do choose in some sense among the shirts, you are determined and therefore not free in your choice because you are determined to choose only what you see as the best shirt. Uh, and I would ask for evidence for that and say, well, and the, the only way that you seem to be able to uh, answer that argument, to provide evidence is say, well, if, you know, obviously you chose what you thought was best. If you didn't think it was best, you wouldn't have chose it, you know. And that seems to me to be 
tautological or circular, unless there's a way I'm not seeing. Or, <laughs> yeah, if it's not tautological, it at least seems to be trivial and not really of substantive relevance to the free will versus determinism debate. Well, I, no. I, I think I think I can see why it's not trivial because um, mm -hmm. it seems like I, th I think what. I think what Mario's trying to say here is mm -hmm. that, um, and this is more or less David Hume, I guess, is that uh, mm -hmm. it's it's relevant insofar as what you take to be, uh, I suppose, the best, and insofar as you are inclined by nature, given the kind of animal you are, to always go for what you perceive the best to be. And of course, again, as you say, it, it is subjective. But, but, but that's almost, the fact that it's subjective is almost what's unimportant. What's important is that that's how humans seem to be designed or, or made or what have you. And so if you look at that with regards to freedom versus determinism, well, the freedom seems to lie specifically in the, the ability to, I guess, be more discerning. And insofar as you can have preferential, make preferential choices, which is arguably at, at a higher, more advanced state than most other creatures, that implies a certain degree of freedom and a certain degree of dignity, I think. I think that's the long and short of it. And so you're determined insofar as, again, it seems like you have some sort of nature, that, that you are this kind of thing. But you're you're still free insofar as, yeah, the the, the variables can be, um, I, I guess, swapped at your will, because it is up to you to, uh, you know, relative to what society says, what is and is not, quote unquote, the best. I mean, simply saying that you try to make the best choice all the time, I think that's a very obvious point. You, you're going to do the thing that you think is is makes the most sense to you in terms of benefit. Uh, regardless of how you quantify or, or qualify benefits, um, I think that's that's pretty clear, and so that's why this kind of seem like trivial. It's almost like no duh. Yeah. But but I think relative to the context of the discussion, I, I think it, I think it's important. I don't see if that counts in favor of determinism, though. Uh, no, because uh, like I mentioned, David Hume was a compatibilist because he will also add to his compatibilist view. I believe that's what he said in in this case. It does since since you can, uh, because he was, he will basically, this is where, this is where I'm going to now talk about compatibilism. Because I laid out like, what is determinism, which is, you have to choose what is for the best. There is a paradox, but I'll mention that later. <laughs> so, so now let's, let's argue in the competitive direction, which is, you have free will. You have free will, but you also are determined at the same time. How would that play out? Oh, played out. All right, so no, not played out. Play, played <laughs> How out. How would that play out? How would that play out? <laughs> <laughs> All right, played like, out. Let's no, like let's use. <laughs> that was the best pun ever, and it yeah. wasn't even let's intentional. Let's use. Let's use. <laughs> yeah, so let's so, use the five shirts example again. Yeah. So, How would that yeah. uh, determinism and free will uh, scenario play out? Anthony, oh, how would play? Oh, sure. So it would play out that it's already determined. Anthony left a long time. So he's on the phone down on mute and he's like eating lunch. <laughs> so also they play that yes. argument of determinism, which is everything else in your biological is determined. Okay. Once again, like everything is determined. But let's ignore the the fact that you're gonna go for the best. That's the first the first thing that you have to ignore for the okay. moment. So, so whenever like you have a choice, you claim that you're always gonna be determined to choose something that you. Uh, how can I let it out? I feel like I, I feel like I, it's still gonna be something like you 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 like you like the best. You still gonna you make a choice. The most. You value the both. Uh -huh. So whenever like you choose a shirt, then means that you have two shirts that they're equally the same. So therefore, like you have kind of like a choice a choice of a yes or no. But you still have no free will. They'll claim that you have will but not free will. So let me go from Locke how he he explains what free will is. So Locke will argue that. Technically, free will is an improper question to ask. He claimed that you cannot ask a question such as, do you have free will? You're supposed to ask the question, uh, are you free? But not, do you have free will? Because he argued that will and free are separate questions from each other. He said that free is the idea to say yes or no to any choice. Like, for example, you can say yes, I'm going to read. No, I'm not going to read. So that would be the free. Yes, I'm going to listen. No, I'm not going to listen. Okay, ah, yes. Yeah. Paper or plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and then will, in, in another way, it's already determined. That means that will, he defines will to be having the inedible. Is it like motivation? Yeah, I think the inedible motivation. Will just means having the inedible motivation to do something. So therefore, will is already determined according to John mm -hmm. Locke. Like, and also yeah. David Hume's agreeing with Locke. Like, yeah, will is already determined. But the free is the part that gives you the aspect that you basically are free to say yes or no. And that's how they argue that you're basically compatible. Yeah, the I way of determine, 
but you still have the choice. I like. I think that's really. I think you broke that down nicely. And <laughs> um, and yeah, that is interesting. And we didn't really take it in that direction. Uh, compatibilism, uh, at least not when I I heard the, the shared group discussions. But yeah, <laughs> that's that is fascinating to, to to hear. I would have liked to hear some some of the students' thoughts on that. <laughs> um, well. Hi, what is uh, what do you take freedom to be? Actually, um, <laughs> I kind of want to give an analogy to it. Because um, oh, by the way, we got 15 minutes left, guys. Okay, so I'll be really <laughs> fast. Final about. 15. <laughs> I feel like um, when when people make choices, like you said, uh, determinism is a, a big factor because they only see the things that they're allowed to choose. Like they they're, they're right. capable of choosing. Like if you have two doors in front of you and you're in a room and you can only choose between two those two doors, that's that's what it is. But then if you have knowledge and power and you have all if they will open up more doors for you right yeah. and if you have like uh the other day claire was saying that you could uh, you could make uh, you could be free uh, if you had no knowledge as well and i kind of argued that if you had no knowledge you would not even know those choices existed for you but and if the choices but if you don't know the choices exist for you do the choices just disappear no, they Are you doing origami? <laughs> no, no sorry. No, they don't. It's just that you are not aware of it as a conscious. I'm a talented When guy. you when you are when you have absolute knowledge, you can ma you those choices are available for you, but free will is making those choices, choosing those choices. And Professor Manzi said that it's assigning one choice a meaning and making that choice. Yeah. It's also uh, freedom is essentially absolute knowledge plus absolute power power being being able to make that choice right and free will is making that choice with meaning behind it <laughs> and i mean if I, as human beings and I, there's this other thing i kind of talked about which is kind of like it, it talks goes into metaphysics freedom or free there is a perfect version of free will which is having all the knowledge you that is it, inhumanly possible all the power that is also inhumanly impossible and then everything that we possess so every free will that we think of is an imperfect version of it oh okay one question because you claim that we have free will but how much like absolute free will no we don't or kind of like in a compatible direction like probably both partial free i think if you have, like i said if compatible what <laughs> like compatible listen like kind of like both what is that i think never heard that up earlier Mario? i think it's uh <laughs> I would bring, I don't know, compatible things like the definition of having both. Yeah, I guess. I, that's, I think it, you can derive that. Mm. But I feel like <laughs> uh, I feel like when I said it was an absolute free will would be having all the power you uh, absolute power and absolute knowledge, do you know that every well, every infinite option exists? And yeah, but I'll have one, I think there's only one power in that argument. Because if you have absolute free will, then something had to determine you to have that in the first place. So once again, it back to it was determined Determin that you didn't have all the free will. But yeah, it does not ru it does not ruin the uh, the fact that there you still will have free will. Yeah, but you can call it absolute because absolute means it's a hundred percent and no determinism in it. No, I didn't say it has didn't have any determinism. Oh. Determinism would mean that it <laughs> that something didn't de determine that you would have free will. But every no matter what you say in this, everything is determined. From the start to the finish, everything will be determined. So you can't exist. Uh, it, uh, I mean, it's not a, it's not an uncomfortable fact if you think about it, right? <laughs> Is think about it. Determined. Well, the only problem with being absolutely determined would be like how we are accountable of our choices. I, I have to even later that that would be like the main I have question. A question. The about determinism. I have a question. So if everything is determined, and I'm not against the idea of it being determined, but as, if everything is determined, who decides what you'll do after this podcast ends? No. Yeah. Do you not make the decision yourself? Yes, but Wouldn't see, that be free will? When, uh, what I think of determinism is the fact that the future is set, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and that doesn't mean that you can't, uh, that doesn't mean that, oh, you can change the future. No, think of it like as a river, right? Everything will be on the path, on the path, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, the, this water molecule will go that way, that water molecule will go this sure. way, but it will still move in that particular direction. Okay, I, I don't, I'm not arguing that the, the future is obviously going to be before us and the past is obviously yes. going to be behind us, but we can, do we not have control over... We do. What the water does. Are we not the particles that move in the water and make think it move? Think about it this way. Think about it this, this way. Uh, what I was thinking is free will is a consciousness, right? Rocks do not have free will, right? Think about water molecules who are gaining consciousness and choosing to go that oh. way, yet staying on the path. 
okay. yet staying going in the same direction. Everybody's going in the same direction. You mean mm -hmm. that rock? But we, as as uh, beings with conscious, we can still choose where we go, but we will still go in the same direction. Sure, yeah. we'll always go. It always go from present to future. Exactly. Yeah. I would say that there is one paradox that can not be the key that nope, you are basically determined. That's called Schrodinger's cat paradox. Schrodinger's cat? Yeah, Schrodinger's yeah. cat. <laughs> yeah, not Schopenhauer, Schrodinger. Oh, Schrodinger's cat paradox argued that. Yeah. Imagine that there's a, a a photon that can do anything. Like it can be both dead and alive at the same time. Mm -hmm. But there's a cat in the box, which is once the photon dies, it will instantly kill the cat. But if the photon can be both dead and alive, then that means that the cat must be dead and alive in the box, as long as you don't open it. But once you open the box, then you just determine that one thing happened. And pretty much that, that's a paradox. Yeah, it's, it's a paradox because there you cannot know with any degree of certainty one way or the other. That, that brings yeah. in the qu question of knowledge, right? As yeah, I think so. As you p do not possess the knowledge, you cannot make the choice. The moment you possess it, you can make the choice. Well, yep. l let me just throw this out there. I, I wonder <laughs> if, if the whole freedom versus determinism debate is um, a little beside the point, just in general. It can uh, be. And, and I, th I throw it out there for the following reason. It seems like even, even in the ways that we're speaking of, compatibilism or this understanding of, uh, of knowledge is somehow being uh, liberating, with also this conceding that there are some things that you cannot change, again, what you might call your factuality in, in, in an early Heideggerian sense. <laughs> it's, um, it seems like, you know, at the end of the day, even if we are free within certain confinements, within cer certain constraints due to our nature or due to societal uh, uh, j just um, products uh, over time and history of, of how the civilization manifested, you know, whatever the conditions are, whatever the, the qualities or, or the qualifiers that limit freedom or determine your actions are, the actions themselves and, and the possibilities themselves mm -hmm. are only okay. understood in terms of how you interpret them and their significance. And it seems like that, that subjective quality of it is where you're inherently free because, sure, you, you have to pick a shirt to wear and you're gonna tr you're, it's determined that you're going to pick the one that you think looks the best on you given the, and all, all that stuff. But, but I mean, what, but that doesn't call into question, it seems to me. What, what it sort of assumes is that things mean the same for everybody or, or, or that that's something... That's what that I meant when I said subjective. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I said as yeah. well. But yeah. it would seem that... What uh, a classic, what a classic move that was. Yeah, but there I was... I just laid out here beautifully in like three minutes and then these two, they just go, <laughs> yeah, so that's why I actually... No, I... Meant. When I, I said this completely... Okay. 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 Look, Uche did say, Uche did say it was subjective and hey, I did man. say that some people don't go for I'm the, the best shirt. So, the yes. Leaves. You, if anything, it. you took our ideas. Yeah, so here's I'm the... I'm a pretty face on the idea. So here's the part that the determinants will use against compatibility. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. So this, this is the part that the compatibilist will use. I mean, determinants will use against compatibilists. Sorry, I said it the wrong way. So with compatibilists, I mean, determinants will say, all right, so if you see, if you think you have a choice, you 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 have a freedom to say yes or no, and then they agree, like, all right, let's say that you have two shirts that you equally like, you equally like the most, like, Mm -hmm. There's one shirt that looks orange and one that looks red. I've never spent this much time thinking about yeah. shirts in my life. <laughs> so, so one way they can defeat the argument would be like, well, there's still a shirt so in the definition you like shirt, but then people like, oh, right, let's say agree that there are different shirts all together, or these objects are, let's say that you or have a bottle. The same shirt. So let's agree that you have a bottle and then of whiskey, and it's <laughs> something that you look like a lot. And then you have like a... These like under a bowl, age, dude. Like a <laughs> bowl. Under age. All right, so uh, let's uh, say that uh, you have uh, a bottle of juice. <laughs> and then a bottle of, of crackers. Juice right. and crackers. Or crackers. But you equally Let's like... say you're in prison. <laughs> that you like equally both of them the same, but you can only choose one. And okay. this is called burdenous ass. That's what the name of the, of the paradox. Oh, let's say Yeah, that's, that's on the Philosophy Club t-shirt. Yeah, so... I'm oh, yeah. everybody wore their, their t-shirts on this monumental day. Oh, yeah. yours. Well, let's call it donkey <laughs> if you get offended. So let's use the word ass or donkey. So which one you guys prefer? Uh, I, I prefer four-legged. <laughs> yeah. Four-legged um, mammal. Okay. So I'll call it donkey, so just not so offend people. <laughs> all right, so, bro, so imagine that there was a donkey. By, by the way, actually, that's, I, j I actually already said all that, Mario, when I said determinism. That's, yeah. that's what I meant. That's yeah. what I already said all that. <laughs> so the paradox <laughs> well, so basically states that even compatibilism is not valid because you're gonna, because if you have two stuff that are equally the same, you're going to die because you have, you're going to basically be forced to be a rip Wait a second. To take I feel like, <laughs> that come from? That come out of nowhere. like I missed half of the I think argument. he's going to get the paralysis of choice. Yeah, because oh. so basically says that you had to make one choice, but if they're both equally the same, then you still have to make a choice because you're forced to, but 
You yeah. have to, but they're both equally the same, so you're just gonna. I don't think can I, I, can you can add 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 the choice to not make the choice. Yeah. Can I add something? Uh, let, let Caleb. Yeah, let Caleb. Yeah, okay, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> no, no, I, was, I, I can't resist the uh, the temptation to quote Rush in response to, to that uh, dilemma, which is if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. <laughs> I wish we had the, the song here. Yes, but everyone has, everyone has <laughs> been saying, oh, you can either make this choice or this choice, without the choice that no one's talking about, the choice that I don't want to make a choice. <laughs> well, say that out loud, Jeff. Just do it. Just but, say it out loud. The microphone's. Which, oh, is still a, which is still a choice. That was Maynard monologue. <laughs> yeah, which is still a choice. Yeah, I think I'll let you guys answer now. I think I've heard enough. No, <laughs> guys, I've... we got three minutes left. Um, <laughs> hi, do you want to say something? Yeah, I feel, I feel like the, oh, right. the third... <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. The f- third option of choosing not to choose is, is always the option. But in the in the situation, if you have two equal, equal options, regardless of what you choose, you will still have the same results. And when I come across that sort of thing, it just, like, if I have to choose between two people to give a certificate of excellence to them, and I and I did this, like, the other day for my exam, and I was supposed to choose wisely. I took a coin, and I flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, got, I chose person A for heads, person B for tails. I flipped it, got heads. And at that moment, I instantly regretted it. Like, and then I knew what I was going to choose. I wanted person B That's be- because I got person A. And b- b- because I instantly found the worth of person B to me more. But then in a, t- in, in a situation that every possible outcome you choose is going to be the same, then it's it doesn't really matter at the same time. It's not really determined. It's just it doesn't really matter. You said that even if you have the ability to not choose neither, then, yeah. then they were not the best to begin with that the other argument that we're probably like no then they were not the best to begin with if you didn't choose yeah, but then it's it just really de- or what if it, it just really depends <laughs> on their <laughs> the uh, that was dead air. <laughs> it just really de- it depends on the outcome like if you if it's I like a thousand dollars and a thousand dollars and you can choose a thousand dollar in coin but then you don't really have a choice you already determined that because they're both equally the thing yeah this, it, but if you choose not all right, all right ding 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 Right over. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we guys, we got to wrap up right now. Um, uh, closing remarks. I'll, I'll just say this, and mm-hmm. then we'll go around the the studio as well. Uh, guys, it's been a great semester. I had a lot of fun uh, this season, and I hope you guys did as well. Um, it's been great to, to getting uh, getting to know you. It's been great to getting to know some uh, nice. some of the students. Season yep. three. And I'll say yeah, that I'm a season. determinist. I was a competitor, but now I'm a Who determinist. Who made the choice for you? Yeah. I was like, we won't hold you. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it's okay, Mario. We won't hold it you. <laughs> <laughs> help it. That was good. <laughs> Come on, Mario. <laughs> Can I give shout outs? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's shout out uh, the Philosophy Club officer. Shout out Hannah. Uh, shout out uh, Mr. Man in the Sky, Anthony. <laughs> shout out Julio. Shout out Emma. I'm dead, I guess. Uh, <laughs> shout out UTD, UTD's Philosophy Club. <laughs> I recently went up there oh, yeah. last Friday. It was really good. I liked it a lot. And I'll probably be back this Friday. Yeah, you're saying they're definitely the second best friends <laughs> around. <laughs> UTD uh, seven to eight. Uh, or, I forget the room number. It's like seven thirty to nine or something. S- yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's uh, every Friday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Cool. I like it. Shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, we should link up. Get at me. Get at me. UTD Flossy Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. For me, I would say the. Is that a challenge? No, no, no. It's uh. <laughs> wow, Mandy. I want to be friends. <laughs> okay. Is it an invitation? Is match what? to a, a duel or something? Can we trade officers? <laughs> like, can you like take a glove and slap him in the face? <laughs> Let Mario do his sign off. <laughs> All right. So I probably said like shout out to the original Flossy Club. Thank okay. you. They're still better than the R U N T Flossy Club. Oh, oh, like, oh, 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 o
Yeah, these are recording words, words, Anthony. No. These are yeah, words. Anthony. We need your divine yeah, words. This is, this well, this it was great. great. Divine words. All right. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Thank Be you. you. Yeah, I know what to do. <laughs> Don't rob that bank. Or <laughs> you know, it's like you know, because life is like. All right, we're know. done, man. Do you <laughs> <laughs> Former treasurer. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, stay in touch, Anthony, of course. And Skype in uh, whenever you'd like. I might start Skyping every episode in if it's me. <laughs> okay. You're listening to KD. Like, <laughs> we listen like, to KD Oaks Radio broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are our own unless otherwise stated. And do not reflect the opinion of K Ducks Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. You, this is live from the Albatross Nest. And uh, oh gosh, like one uh, last time, wasn't it? One last time for 2017. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it a little Think bit. Think about, about it. Go to finals, everyone.